Hi folks, uh, my name is Vernick or you may know me as Feeling. Today I'm going to review the pie top for Newark Element 14. Uh, they provided the pie top and they included a bonus uh, raspberry pie. So I'm going to uh, focus my review on the pie top. So let's begin. We will open this box. First thing you will notice is there's a pocket here and it's filled with cutouts. Um, these cutouts will be very useful for uh, the activities that are included with the pie top. So uh, the pie top coder activities will focus on um, the smart robot, the space race and the music maker activities. So everything is pre-cut, you just have to glue that. We can dig deeper into the box. So let's open this. Here you can see uh, there are two manuals, the getting starter and the inventory kit manual. Very interesting, uh, lots of projects. Uh, that's really, really exciting for kids. And I have to say that I'm not a kid, but I'm interested by those activities too. So we'll try this uh, with my teenage girls uh, a little bit later. And in the getting starter manual, uh, you can feel something. So there's a little gift included in this manual, and it's this micro SD card that is already, uh, uh, the, the PyTap OS is already installed in it. So, and then, what do we get? This is the PyTap. And yes, it's really green, so you won't lose it. No chance you can lose it. We'll have a close-up view later. And then, oh yeah, the inventor kit is already included in the box, filled with components, everything you need to do the activities. So all the activities, the cutouts and the components, everything is included in the price. Very sweet. And you have the power adapter. The power adapter is international. There is a UK, Australian, US plug. I don't know if I forget one. But all the plugs, you can travel the world with this thing and it will work. So now, let's have a close-up view. So here is a close-up view at a pie top. Uh, this is a front view. Very thin in the front. And then we can move to the side. Uh, the side you can see that it's a little bit larger in the back. This is where the Raspberry Pi is going to sit inside the Pi Top. So this is why it, have, it has this V shape. And then the back view. At this point, there is no Raspberry Pi inside. So as you can see, it's empty. Uh, later on, when we will put the Raspberry Pi, I, it's going to fit very tight inside and it's going to fit perfectly. But at this point, it's empty. The other side view, uh, there is the standard lock hole. So if you have a lock cable, you can use this hole. And then the inside view. So, okay. This is the inside view. There is a very large screen. This screen is 14 inches large. Uh, it's a 1080p resolution, so it's HD. And you can open, slide open the keyboard. And when you do that, you have full access to the PyTop hub where you will connect your Raspberry Pi. So let's do this. Okay, so now it's time to connect the Raspberry Pi. Uh, there is this tool that is provided and it's the multi-tool that is used to remove the SD card and it can be used as a screwdriver. Uh, this tip can be used as a screwdriver. I tried it. Uh, it's actually working. So if you look, I can unscrew this. But I have to admit it's a pain and I gave up. So yes, it's kind of working. Okay, let's forget about the multi-tool and yeah. This is a real screwdriver. The first step is to remove the cooling bridge. 
The cooling bridge is the fan and it's also providing power to the Raspberry Pi. So now that the cooling bridge is removed, you have to slide the hub and remove this part. This part is just provided to prevent any damage to the cooling bridge when, during shipping. So it, it's not useful anymore. You can just put it in the trash. Okay, here we go. Now it's time to install the Raspberry Pi. So here's the beast. It's a brand new Raspberry Pi 3 B plus that was provided as a gift by Element 14 and I'm so so happy because I wanted to try it since uh, it came out a few weeks ago. So the best way to put the Raspberry Pi into the Pi Top is to have a little angle like that. You just connect the USB part in the back first and when it's really tucked in you can push down and align the screw holes. So time to screw it. You have to push gently on the hub until the audio part and the HDMI part are really connected together. Once it's done, the cooling bridge can be connected here in the GPIO and there on the connector and the hub. So you will have to apply gentle pressure on those two extremities. Like that and like that. Okay, everything is tucked in. You have to screw the cooling bridge and that's it folks, your laptop is ready. So now let's boot the Pi Top for the first time. You have to press the power button and hold it until it boots. The first boot is a little bit longer, uh, the next boot will be much faster. The PyTap dashboard, uh, this is an application, it's optional, if you don't like it, if you prefer to use the Raspberry Pi desktop, no problem. You can go on the upper left corner, click on the desktop icon and you will be, you will go directly to the Raspberry Pi dashboard that you may know. So this is a possibility. But when you boot the PyTop, it will always bring you here in the PyTop dashboard where you have access to the PyTop coder. The PyTop coder is the application that we will want to visit uh, when you will do the activities like um, the smart robot activities, the music maker activity and the space race activity. So it will be in the PyTop coder. Uh, it's, uh, let's launch it. It's a place to learn Python in a very easy and useful way. So let's look at the project. All the projects that you need to start coding are right there. Uh, if you go to the Hello World, Hello World is the first step for the smart robot activity. So you can just click on Hello World and hit the play button. The tutorial will start. When starting, you have to just read the tutorial. So they explain you that you have to use this smart robot cutout and to glue it. And when you're ready, you come back here. You will need, and this is all the parts that you need, and for each part that you may not know about, like the LED and the resistor, uh, just take note that this is uh, for kids, so they might not know what is a resistor. 
So you click and they show you what a resistor is and what it does in a circuit. So you have all the information. This is for the LEDs. They will show you the protoboard. So it's really easy for kids to select the, the correct components. And here in the bottom, you can see that there is the protoboard. They show you where to connect the resistor, where to connect the LED. Everything is really, really well shown for the kids. So now it's time to code. They show you the code sample. You can type it like from GPIO0 import LED. There's another option. If you don't want to type, no problem. They will let you just hit the arrow and the code is directly copied uh, in, uh, in the form. So you can go here and hit the arrow, etc. Let's go back to the dashboard and explore the seed universe. Hit the play button. Seed universe is a game. Uh, the, the, the objective of this game is to learn about uh, software development, but in a fun way. You have the story mode. So the story mode is really a hit my name, villain. Let's create and start the game. In the story mode, you have uh, this little character that is uh, lost in space after his spaceship has crashed uh, on a mysterious planet. And then you have to uh, walk on the planet to find resources and to fix your spaceship. So here you go. This is what the planet looks like. When you reach enough intelligence, uh, you will have puzzles, puzzles to solve. And those puzzles will be all about software development, but it won't be that, that clear for children. So they will learn about software development without knowing it, knowing it. If you don't want to do the story mode, there's also the arcade mode. It's all the puzzles that are in the Seed Universe story mode, but all in one place. The data types game. It's uh, an agility game where you will see data types in the middle that will move to the side and you have to catch them all with the good data type. So if there is a, a number that is about to, to cross the circle, you have to catch it with an integer catch. Uh, if it's a, a string, you have to switch your type to string, etc. There's bull and float. So I'm very, very lame at this game, but let's try this. Okay, so this is a float. 40, that's 40. Oh, a bull, yes, that's false. Another float, I have to catch it. And then a string, oh, not that bad. Okay, an int, minus one or three. Okay, a float. So the goal is really to learn about data types. Ah, I told you I was lame. Okay. So let's, let's die at this point. This is it. So this is the data type game. And uh, there is the nanobot game. So in the nanobot, you have to uh, move this little nanobot to what look like a spaceship. So you have to dare mine yeah, what would be the next move? And every move is really shown with arrows, but you can convert to Python. And oh, this is the code. So you have a visual way to code it and a Python way to code it. So let's execute. We'll see the little spaceship. Oh yeah, 
you read shit. Um, and it, it can get hard very fast. So let's move to the, let's say, level 10. Level 10, then you are introduced to function and function can call other function. So if you think it's easy, think again. Let's see, let's see the game. And the last game is Crack Locks. Crack Locks is a little bit closer to Python programming. In fact, it's Python code. Uh, they have a sample here and you have to only modify a few variables on the top to make the code work. So if the variable and integer is equal to five, the key will move up. Currently it's six, so it won't work. Let's modify it to five and run. Yeah, we got it. So that's a really fun way to learn about software development. That was Seed Universe.